Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to use the Shockspool 2D. So let's begin by taking a look at the textures we're going to be using. In this demo I'm going to be using hill5.png here and rubble3.png here. So let's drag these into our project. Now the first thing you need to do is change these into sprites. To do that just select your textures and in the inspector change the texture type here to sprite and then hit apply. Now let's add the hill5 into our scene. And to make this destructible, basically all you have to do is select the sprite either in the hierarchy or click on it in the scene window. And if you take a look at the inspector, you'll see the sprite renderer component. To the right of the sprite renderer, you'll see a gear icon, which is the context menu drop down. If you click on that, then you see the make destructible option at the bottom. If you select that, then now our sprite is destructible. So just to go through some of the settings here, the main texture here, if you take a look at that, this has been copied from the sprite. And the alpha texture here, this has also been copied from the sprite. And this is what will be modified when we destroy it. So let's say we want this to be static geometry. That means it doesn't move, there's no physics or anything, it just stays still and we blast holes in it. For that, we want to set the collider type here to edge. If you set it to polygon or auto polygon, then it's not as efficient. Edge is very, very efficient, but it doesn't work for a dynamic geometry that moves around. So we want to use this for uh, static terrain. For example, if you're making a worm style game, then you will want to use edge for the level. If you have like grenades and stuff, you want to use polygon or auto polygon, uh, whatever. So now we've set that, you can take a look in the scene view. You can see the collider is very, very accurate. It follows all of the contours of the sprites very accurately. Uh, if you want to see what Unity is built in, Polygon Collider looks like, then change it to Auto Polygon, and you can see that it's very wasteful. There's lots of... Well, you can see the difference between the sprite position and the actual collider position is very, very distant. It's like uh, five or six pixel uh, pixels off there, so that's not very good if you want a very accurate game. So these built-in Edge and Polygon Colliders make it very accurate for you, and they're also very fast at updating. So... This is static, so let's set it to edge. Let's duplicate this a few times to make our scene more interesting. Now let's add the rock in, so the rubble three. Let's drag that into our scene. And again, in the sprite renderer, let's click the gear icon and add the make destructible, add the destructible sprite component. And then this time we want to choose polygon or auto polygon. In this case, I'm gonna choose polygon. Now let's duplicate this a few times to make our scene more interesting. And oh yeah, I need to add a rigid body 2D to my rocks because they're going to fall onto the ground. So now that I've done that, let's hit play. And you can see the rocks fall onto the ground as you might expect. So now we need to add some way to destroy these sprites. So one of the easy ways to do this is to select the main camera and add component and then let's add in the click to stamp component so if i add that you'll see i have a bunch of options now the most important one here is the stamp texture what this does is tells you what you want the explosion shape to look like so if we look through this list you'll see i have a nice shape here a solid star so if i set that and then hit play now if I click the mouse, or if I touch with my finger on an iOS or Android device, then you'll see I can punch holes into my rocks or the ground. And if I take a look in the scene view by selecting one of the sprites, you'll see that the collision shape has been updated automatically. The same with the dynamic rocks here. Now one thing you'll notice is that if I try and slice this rock in half, let's say if I click here and click here and click here, the rock is now in two pieces, but it didn't move, There's, it didn't fall over or anything. That's because right now it's just one sprite. So if you want this to split in half, then what you have to do is choose the allow split option here. So if I select my rock and take a look at the destructible sprite component, if I enable the allow split option, now if I hit play, and if I click in the middle of the rock, and if I click again, you'll see now it's split into two rock pieces. You see the left piece and the right piece. Uh, the left, yeah, left piece and right piece. Now you can keep splitting these rocks indefinitely. Um, like there we go, I just split it into even more pieces. So there's no limitations about uh, how you can split it. 
And in fact, if I replace the star shape with something more interesting, let's say, let's say my explosion shape looked like a propeller blade or something. So there's three lines shooting out. If I were to shoot it in the middle of my rock, then it would split into three pieces. So there's no limitations about that. And uh, one thing you may be concerned about is performance. Like if your rocks are very, very big and you have lots of destructible sprites, then maybe performance is an issue. If this is the case, then just select the sprites that are, that are affected and then look at the destructible sprite component and then click on the context menu and then choose the halve alpha texture option. So before I do that, let's take a look at the alpha texture. So this is the alpha texture for all of the rocks. As you can see, it's 150 by 96 pixels uh, in size. So if I change that by clicking on the halve alpha text and take a look at the texture again, you'll see now that it's halved in size. But halving in size actually means it has four times less pixels or a quarter of the amount of pixels. So that means the calculations will be very, very efficient. So let's say these were still uh, taking up quite a bit of CPU time. So let's halve them again. So now they'll be very, very efficient. If I split them in half, it'll be very, very fast. And um, But one problem with doing that is that you'll notice you have jagged edges because you can see all of the pixels now. So now what what used to be one pixel is now uh, four pixels or something. So it becomes very, very evident. So one way to conceal this effect is by uh, going to the context menu in your sprites and then choosing blur alpha texture. So what this does, it blurs the edges. So now your once jagged edges are now very smooth. But one issue with this is that it makes your edges very smooth. As you can see, there's a, there's a gradient between transparent and opaque. So one way to sharpen the edge here is to increase the sharpness value here. If I increase that to say 5, you'll see the edge now is very, very hard. It's similar to what I had originally. So basically, I've improved performance here by about 16 times, and I've lost almost no noticeable uh, graphic fidelity. So it's really easy to optimize the sprites. And uh, also, another interesting thing is that you can... Uh, increase the size of these sprites, like if I scale it up and maybe increase the sharpness. Now if I hit play, you'll see if I shoot a hole in this rock, the ro the explosion shape remains the same size. So if your uh, geometry, like your sprites are rotating or scaled or anything, your explosions will work across all of them. And even if you explode between two objects, then the same shape will be stamped across both of them. So if you want to make more ex uh, interesting explosions like this, I'm just clicking and then suddenly it's disappearing. If you want to make it more interesting, then let's remove the click to stamp component and let's instead add the click to spawn component. So this allows you to spawn a prefab whenever you click or you touch your finger. So if I open this up and choose explosion number four, now if I hit play and I click the mouse, you'll see I spawn a nice particle effect and also this particle effect blasts uh, the rocks apart and also takes a chunk out of them. So yeah, those are the most important features. Now one of the final key things I'm going to show you here is the density texture setting here. So what this means is actually I will load up one of the uh, demo scenes to show you. So this is the density demo scene. As you can see here, I have three spikes, the left, middle, and right one. The left one does not have a density texture. The middle one has a 25% density texture, and the right one has a 50% density texture. So what that means is that the density texture has a 50% opacity, and this one has a 25% opacity. So if I hit play, if I shoot something at the left uh, spike, you will see that there's a nice a uh, circle has been cut out, and if I do that on the 25% one, you'll see that the explosion has less effect. That's because the density is higher. In this case, it's 25% density. So you can use this to make uh, like steel doors or something that are really hard to destroy. Or in the uh, case of the earlier sprites I used, uh, let's see the hill 5 here. Let's say I want the grass to be very easily destroyed, but the rock would be hard to destroy. So in that case, I would set up a separate texture where the opacity for the grass is lower than the opacity for the rock. So that uh, allows you to easily control that. 
So that covers it for the main features. Uh, I encourage you to look at the other demo scenes that I've included on the forum page and the uh, asset store page. They show you all of uh, the different ways you can use it in games. For example, uh, I'll quickly show you them here. You see here we have like a space shooter game. So you can fly your spaceship around and you can blast some asteroids and you can also split them in half if I can aim correctly. You see there, oh, I destroyed it now, but uh, yeah, you can see that. There's also like a car damage, you see here. If you crash the car into another car or something, you see I spawn an explosion where the impact is. So these scripts are all included with Destructible 2D, like uh, spawning the explosion wherever there is an impact and stuff like that. So without any programming knowledge, you should be able to uh, get a pretty decent game up and running and uh, I hope you enjoyed watching the video I hope it was helpful if you have any further questions then feel free to email me you can get my email from the asset store uh, publisher page or you can post on the forum thread um, so yeah thanks for watching